Coming up next on Flightline News, angle of attack indicators were installed on some of the aircraft, find out the latest, and I find out what it's like to be the pilot of the Goodyear blimp. That and more as Flightline News starts right now. Hello and welcome to Flightline News, I'm Bob Thomas. The Joint Aviation Steering Committee along with the NTSB has recommended that angle of attack indicators be installed in general aviation aircraft. Embry-Riddle is taking on this initiative and testing three different types of Alpha system angle of attack indicators. These indicators use a sensor mounted on the right wing next to the wing strut to gather information and determine the aircraft's angle of attack. Three aircraft, 405, 3904, and 3902, have three different angle of attack indicators installed. So if you fly in them, please give your feedback to the flight department, and soon we will announce if and what kind of angle of attack indicators will be installed across the fleet. The Women's Air Race Classic is set to begin in June, and this year's team members are... Danielle Ehrlichman, pilot. Val Mehania, co-pilot. Kelsey Tenhove, alternate pilot. This year's race starts in Pasco, Washington and ends in Fayetteville, Arkansas. The race will take place this summer from June 18th to the 21st. The total trip for us to get out there and fly the race and come back will be over 5,000 miles, but the race itself will be about 2,500. Last year we won first place in the collegiate division and we hope to do so again this year. In order for the race to be successful, we need your help. March 12th from 11.30 to 1.30, we'll be having a barbecue fundraiser outside the flight line. Please stop by and help support our team. Thank, Thank you. you. We'll, we'll see, see you there. there. The flight department is sponsoring a raffle to help the Volusia County-based Food Brings Hope organization. Each department on campus has been asked to help out this worthy cause. All proceeds will go to the Food Brings Hope organization to feed disadvantaged children in the Volusia County area. Tickets are $2 each or $6 for $10, cash only please. Tickets can be purchased at Flight Dispatch or in Deborah Preston's office in the College of Aviation Building, Room 116. Hi folks, it's a pleasure to be with you this morning. We, uh, we have a problem in Volusia County. 2,200 of our children are homeless and a lot of times they're living in cars or living in the woods and their parents take them to gas stations to get cleaned up in the morning but before they go to school. Uh, this is an unacceptable situation. This is the United States of America. We're Embry-Riddle. We need to do something to help these kids and make their lives better. I know that Ken Burns is uh, doing a raffle and I'd like to encourage all of you to buy raffle tickets. Uh, it's a wonderful uh, effort to try and raise money for a very worthwhile cause and from my heart Please give and give a lot to help these young, young people. Thank you so much. So as Dr. Johnson told you, uh, we're working on or we're developing a raffle to raise money for an organization known as Food Brings Hope. Food Brings Hope donates food along with other, other supplies to homeless school children around Volusia and Flagler County. And much like Dr. Johnson said, it, it's pre pretty amazing to imagine that there's over 2,000 individuals, students going to uh, the school system in our local area who don't have a home or, or don't have food to eat. So uh, we're doing our best to raise money for that. And, and this raffle, uh, we'd like you to take part in it. The grand prize is going to be a Bose 10 attenuating headset seen right here. Uh, second prize will be a, a two-hour flight in a DA-42. Third prize will be two-hour flight in a Cessna 172, and the fourth prize is going to be one hour in a Cessna 172 FTD. With summer fast approaching, it's time to start thinking about your summer plans for the possibility of enrolling in the CFI Fast Track program. Some of the benefits of Fast Track are a guaranteed interview for an instructor pilot position once completing the program, a $1,300 ETA credit if you finish prior to summer B ending, and a tuition waiver for three credit hours towards FA-417. Fast Track starts May 6th, and you must have your commercial pilot certificate with airplane single engine land rating by May 6th to begin. You can pick up an application in the Flight Ops Building, Room 119, and applications are due March 31st. For more information about Fast Track, or if you have any questions, please contact Gina Smoller at gina.smoller at erau.edu. You may have seen some new faces in some new places around the Flight Ops Building. Here's Ken Burns with more. Recently we made some uh, organizational changes within the flight department that you all should be aware of. Uh, first of all, I'd like to congratulate uh, training manager Joey Maxwell. Joey has uh, received a, a job working as a pilot for uh, a very well-known regional airline. Uh, Joey has done a tremendous job while he's working here with us at Embry-Riddle. 
We wish Joey good luck in his future uh, endeavors as an airline pilot. To replace Joey, we've hired a very capable individual from within the instructor ranks uh, named Ryan Rush. Please welcome Ryan in his new job duties. Uh, Ryan has already started the, the job duties as a training manager, so we know Ryan will do a tremendous job. Also, uh, we recently added a brand new position within the flight department. It's called the Manager of Quality Assurance. The Manager of Quality Assurance is, is basically going to work uh, with the instructors and uh, the rest of the staff to work on our, our quality of flight instruction. It's something that uh, uh, we determined that we needed in the flight department and we expect very good things to come from this program. We hired a very capable individual for that as well. His name is Leo Matos. Leo used to be a flight instructor here many years ago and then uh, got came back to us after flying a significant amount of time in a Part 135 operation. So please stop by and see him. His office is going to be on the first floor of the Flight Operations Building, right near the safety office. The scholarship for the Upset Recovery Training Course is awarded in memory of ERU alumnus and flight instructor Benjamin Gladstein. The intent of this award is to promote his passion and admiration for flying and to broaden and enhance the education of good situational awareness, airmanship, and aeronautical decision making. This year's recipient is James Huftelin. James is a current CFI at Embry-Riddle, has a BS in Aeronautical Science, and is currently working on his MSA degree. James will receive free tuition, including coverage of all flight fees for the completion of the Upset Recovery Training Course FA215. Congratulations! Here's an update on the CRJ200 Full Motion Simulator that has been purchased by the University. We now expect delivery of the simulator in early June. After delivery, it will take a few additional months to qualify it with the FAA. Starting in fall 2013, Embry-Riddle will be offering an ATP initial training course. Now it's time for this week's special report. The Goodyear Blimp. We see the iconic airship hovering above many sporting events, but what's it like to fly? I wanted to find out, so I went and met the Pompano Beach, Florida-based Goodyear Blimp named Spirit of Innovation while she was parked at the New Smyrna Beach Airport. Goodyear built blimps for the U.S. Navy back in the early 1900s. They were used as surveillance for enemy ships and that's kind of where the blimp business evolved. We use the asset uh, to help out local charities. Uh, in South Florida we provide blimp rides to the local charities who auction them off. Uh, in fact, this past year uh, we raised over $200,000 for local South Florida charities. And then the third thing that we try to do is build a bridge from the consumer to seeing the blimps than to you know, buying our tires. Because uh, at the end of the day we are a tire company and the blimps are great, everyone loves them, uh, but the hope is to build that bridge between, hey look there's a Goodyear blimp, uh, you know, let's go buy some Goodyear tires. So. so what's it like to fly the Goodyear blimp? It's, it's challenging. Um, you know, it's, it's unlike any other aircraft. Um, you know, it's not, we, we, we travel with the crew around 21 people and uh, it, takes, it takes everybody um, together to, to operate it. So it's a little bit different from uh, most av aviation jobs as far as uh, travel and, and um, you know, going from place to place, but, uh, but the challenges are, are, are fun. So it's a cross between uh, kind of like, kind of like a carnival and you know, going down the road. Everybody, everybody's excited to see it set up and, and then uh, off to the next town. So it's, uh, and you get to do a lot of, a lot of fun events. So that makes it, uh, makes it fun as well. I probably log uh, three, 400 hours a year. Um, at, uh, at a very slow rate. Um, I've, I've got about 7,000 hours in airships, so the uh, majority of my, my flight time is, is uh, hanging from a balloon. So it uh, makes it nice. It's a nice shade too. You don't get as tan, so it works out pretty well. Sounds like fun, right? But what do I need to become an airship captain? Well, you have to have a, a private instrument commercial rating um, on top, uh, first off, and it could be either in helicopters or airplanes. Um, and then uh, pretty much just get hired by a company that, uh, that owns and operates them. Um, we, um, we ask for around 1,200 hours uh, total time to, uh, to start out, and then uh, it takes about a year process to get trained up. Um, and it's, it's, it's just a, there's only one set of controls, unlike any other aircraft, so you're, you're pretty much uh, challenged in, in, in different weather inclements and, and such to, uh, to you know, train. We start out doing low-level fly, not even landing, and then uh, slowly get down to the ground, and then we start doing heavier stuff and lighter stuff. It's a, it's a Boeing aircraft, so you have to you know, face both sides of the spectrum, 800 light, 800 heavy is our max um, parameters. So um, it's just, you know, it's, it takes a while to get used to, to that side of things and then getting into the weather inclements as far as wind and no wind and, and stuff like that. So it, uh, it's a long process, but it's, uh, but it's an enjoyable one as long as you're okay with going slow. 
So how slow is slow? We cruise at around 50 knots. Um, if you're doing 30, you're having a good time. Um, there's there's days where you're where you're going 10 and and you're watching uh, watching everything stand still. But um, it's 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 enjoyable because you don't miss anything. Um, in an airplane, you're you're constantly on the radios and constantly flying. And um, with with the blimp, you get to slow down and you know you might be 10 miles out, but it might be an hour out. So <laughs> nothing wrong with that. How is it different than flying a Cessna? Your well, you can take everything in a Cessna and throw it out the window. It's uh, configured differently. You have rudder pedals, um, obviously. Um, we don't have uh, ailerons. We, we have elevator. Um, and it's actually a, a wheel, um, kind of like um, a, a wheel on a wheelchair. It's on, on the, on the right-hand side, um, and that's, that's pretty much our elevator. So we roll it back, we go up, we roll it down, we go down. And then our foot pedals for, for rudder. As far as the instrumentation controls for, for the engines and such like that, all the same. Obviously, it's set up more like a twin, obviously, than a, than a, a single engine. But uh, um, as, far as, as far as that goes, the instrumentation is pretty much the same. Other than that, it's completely different. What about the typical flight? Unlike an airplane, you're, you, you're ballasted at certain weights. For an hour flight, we usually ballast ourselves about 100 pounds heavier than air. And the reason we do that when we fly, it actually the helium itself is cooling. So we're actually making it heavier. So it's a superficial lift when the, when the sun hits the helium because it's heating up. So we calculate with the, with the helium cooling and the fuel burn, what we're gonna come back at. We usually land about 50 pounds heavy. Now throughout an hour flight, we, we could change weights well, from the clouds going behind in front of the sun and such, or the temperature change. So we could change weights four or five times throughout a flight. Um, but we kind of got it down to a, a science, so to speak. The balloon itself is full of helium. Uh, there's no structure inside it whatsoever. So there's actually two miniature balloons inside called ballonets. Um, it's a French term for, for miniature balloons, what it means. Um, behind the engines, actually, as we're flying, the, the prop wash itself is, is scooped up into two air scoops behind the engines, and we actually force air into the ballonets. So as, for instance, when we take off, not only are we cooling the helium, but as, we're, as we climb, the helium is wanting to expand at the same time. Well, helium's a very rare gas and it's very expensive, so instead of blowing it off into the atmosphere, we actually just let the airbags deflate as we climb. Now, for instance, when we come back and come back into land, we have to pump that air back in, so we just put it back in, but you don't think it's 200 feet long, so you're actually, it's kind of like a teeter-totter. You're kind of balancing it, and you're gonna have to land on one wheel. That's the trick. That's what takes so long to learn how to fly it. <laughs> What are takeoffs and landings like? There's a couple different ways to take off and there's a couple different ways to land. Um, so we took off light, so we just kind of tossed them up in the air. Um, we call that an upship takeoff. So we just actually just lift the ship up and it's already lighter than air anyway, so you just let it go and it goes. Rolling takeoffs just like a normal airplane. Landing, it can it could be a light landing where you actually have to use the envelope, the balloon part itself, with the wind to get you down. Um, so it's there's there's a lot of aspects of it that uh, that go into it. How old is the Spirit of Innovation? This one's the newest one we have. This one's about uh, seven years old now. Um, they stay inflated for about 14 years as a life life term of them, uh, depending on if we keep them outside or inside. Um, obviously, UV UV gets to them after a while, so if we keep them in a hangar. They, they tend to last a little longer. We're actually uh, transitioning into a new airship. Um, uh, this is the last one of, of this type that we're, we're building. Uh, we're building uh, um, a newer one, it's called uh, the Goodyear NT, it's new technology. It's going to be completely uh, retrofitted, um, completely different, it's going to have three engines on it instead of two. Um, it's going to be uh, about 50 feet longer and uh, it's all fly-by-wire, it's pretty sweet. So the future looks bright and, uh, and uh, it's going to be a good time. And a special thanks to the Goodyear Blimp Spirit of Innovation. Next time on Flightline News, we'll take an in-depth look at the Cape Air JetBlue Gateway program and how you can be a part of it. If you'd like to send us your comments or suggestions for future stories, send us an email at specialvfr at erau.edu. That concludes this episode of Flightline News. I'm Bob Thomas. Thanks for watching. Hello and welcome to Flightline News, I'm Bob Thomas. The Joint Aviation Steering Committee along with the NTSB has removed my script from the teleprompter. What the heck? Hello and welcome to Flightline News, I'm Bob Thomas. The Joint Aviation...
I gotta take the marbles out of my mouth so I can talk correctly. A taff. It's a weather. It's a weather term. It's the angle of a taff. It's, it's what angle you read the taff at. It's a new thing.